Welcome, Sword and Knife friends. Before this presentation, a message. 22 veterans a day take their own lives. We're trying to grow awareness on this channel. Hashtag 22 a day. A message to our veterans. Veterans, you have a place here. You have a place and support in the entire Knife and Sword community. Please seek help if you are in despair. Now on with the show. The Kukri House, K-H-H-I, Nepal. To own a Kukri is to own a piece of history. To understand the Kukri House and their works, including the highly symbolic Kukri, which was a devastating weapon, we must know first the Gurkha. So who are the Gurkha? The Gurkha soldiers are said to be the fiercest, resilient, and most battle-ready soldiers in the world. The history of the Gurkha goes back to the 19th century, even before the creation of the Nepalese state. There has been accounts in history of their incredible bravery in battle with no fear. All they knew was to push forward and defeat their enemy at all costs. An Indian field marshal once proclaimed that if a man says he is not afraid of dying, he is either lying or he is a Gurkha. The British knew this firsthand. For 200 years, they revered the Gurkhas who fought them viciously. The British felt their wrath in 1814 in India while fighting the Gurkha soldiers. When a Gurkha rifle misfired or ran out of ammo, he unsheathed his Kukri for his final do or die run on the enemy, defeating many British enemies just with his Kukri in hand. In a desperate attempt, the British recruited Gurkhas to their own military ranks. They could not defeat them, so they joined with them. During World War II, Aoun Bakata Gurang while fighting the Japanese, was awarded the Victoria Cross for capturing an entire bunker mostly by himself. This is the strength of the Gurkha soldier. Even today, they undergo an extremely vigorous campaign before they can join the esteemed rank as a Gurkha soldier. Where they are awarded their own Kukri. This is the national knife and symbol of the Gurkha soldier. With their devastating Kukri in hand, they were one of the most feared soldiers in history. The Kukri shape is said to be descended about 2,500 years ago from the Greek Kopis. Through the ages, the Kukri was first used by Creatus, who came to power in Nepal in about the seventh century. This makes the Kukri one of the oldest knives in the world. The Nepalese have been making the Kukri for centuries. A strict old age tradition passed on through generations. They're known still as the greatest Kukri makers in the world. The technique is ancestry, making them insanely traditional in how they are made. The Krukeri House officially opened in 1991 in famous Nepal. They have been the world's largest producers of Krukeri knives. In my recent visit to Nepal, I was taken on a first-hand tour of this landmark facility. Okay, okay, I never went there. The manager was gracious enough to record footage for me, so here it is. The Krukeri House in Nepal the official supplier and maker for the British Gurkhas. KHHI is also key in saving the Kukri, which prior to their opening was facing extinction. The founder, Mr. Bish Wakama, was a retired British Gurkha in 1975. This amazing footage of the traditional methods that are used to make these incredible, truly handmade pieces by traditional working craftsmen of this ancestry art of making knives to be beautiful, strong, 
and ready for work or battle. These knives may outlive their owners. Although the management of this facility is extremely modern and professional, I personally think the customer service I received was wonderful and extremely helpful. They produce and deliver their knives around the world in a timely manner. Very impressive. I sincerely believe they produce some of the best handmade knives in the world. Oh, what's going on YouTube? It's Donnie B all day. Yeah, deep in the house and I'm bringing If you are not familiar with Donnie B all day, he has an incredible, charismatic content creator on YouTube that has skyrocketed in ranks as one of the most popular and sought after knife reviewers on social media. His own patented and amazing D-Bad design knives are among the absolute best sellers in the Kukuri House lineup for a great reason. They are designed to be some of the strongest made knives in the world, as well as being works of art. And they are produced with extreme precision, strength, and simple awesomeness by KHHI. Don't believe me? See tons of D-Bed videos where it is demonstrated firsthand. Truly remarkable. And straight from Donnie B all day, the Cookery House is now appointing their masters to personally work on D-Bad knives because of their enormous success. This is huge news for sure. So you can be assured, whatever D-Bad creation knives you receive from the Kukuri House are among the best possible quality that they can offer. Hey guys, welcome to Steel Forge and Fire. My name is Joe. So as you can see guys, there is a vast history behind the Gurkhas and the Kukri. And the Kukri is actually what is the embodiment of the Krukuri house and the history that it comes from. So guys, we did, if you watched my other video, I did an unboxing, which I normally don't ever do, but I felt like I really wanted to do it for uh, the Krukuri house and uh, its packages that I was receiving. So I was actually very excited to uh, finally receive my first Kukri. I hope you enjoyed the history behind the Kukri and the Kukuri house and everything that it stands for. So this is the Kukri from the Kukuri house. It is called the Scourge. And another name for it is also called the Apocalypse. Because if you look at this thing, it's kind of really what you would want to have in your hand if, um, my, my expression, if shit hit the fan and there was an apocalypse, zombies or whatever you want to call it, but this is definitely would, what you would want to have in your hand. It is really a beautifully made, handmade piece. You saw the tour of Nepal that the uh, manager was so kind enough to be able to do for me and get me the footage. It's pretty incredible to see behind the scenes exactly how traditional they are in their methods and how they work. This, these particular pieces I picked up from the Krukuri house, and I'm sure they're not gonna be my last, are pretty stunning and amazing. I mean, there's so, many, so much characteristic in the design, in the little imperfections, and the little blemishes here and there that you feel like it's kind of your own. And that is the beauty of owning a handmade lead knife. And also because the, I, I believe the quality of the craftsmanship is so high up in, in, in level compared to like the production uh, machined press uh, knives that you get, which listen, nothing bad to say about Cold Steel, all these companies, I love their knives, I love their stuff, but there's just something about holding one of these handmade knives in your hand that is just, it's just beauty. And uh, it's balanced and it's contoured to your hand. It's almost, it, you almost feel like it was actually made for you and, and it, it kind of was for the most part because you can customize, you can customize your own kukri there. Um, 
There are options for that. I mean, you have to go to their website. There's a vast amount of options that you can choose from, so you definitely have to check them out. It's supposed to be around, the blade is supposed to be around 13 inches. I measured it a little bit less, probably 12.7, 12.8, so close enough. Again, there are all gonna be variations in the contours, the shape, the color, everything about it. There are all gonna be variations, you know, hence a handmade knife, so you you have to expect that. The actual steel is uh, has an HRC of 55 to 57. The blade material is a 5200 tool steel. It's got a beautifully a beautiful full flat grind. It's got a nice matte finish on the grind. It's double edged, okay, which means you know, you obviously have your sharp edge and then you have the spine is not a false edge. This is a very sharp double-edged knife, okay? A given, this can be a little sharper, but let me tell you something, if I spread my finger right across it, I will definitely bleed, okay? It is sharp. Not as sharp as the front, but if you want, you can work on it. It has potential for you to work on the spine if you really want to get it that sharp. I don't find that much need in it. I don't find myself doing any like uppercuts. I may try it since there is a sharp edge, but it is there and it can be worked on if need be. The way they sell, the, the way they advertise this, this knife, guys, is, uh, is pretty much a fully functional, heavy duty, lethal weapon, okay? Well, it won't be a lethal weapon in my case. This is gonna be a lethal weapon to tatami. It's definitely, I, I, I'm looking forward to this being a serious tatami killer. Japanese tatami mats is what I use for my uh, Japanese style katana. And I am definitely gonna give it a shot with some tatami mats and see basically how they cut. Now there is a specific way to cut with this, which I'm gonna train about. I think if you wanna know how to cut with it really well, you definitely need to watch Donnie B. Uh, Donnie B all day, he does, has some, uh, I think one of his last videos, he actually instructed how to do it, uh, but it has something to do with the fingers and kind of snapping it to the, the last three fingers. Uh, you know, it's, there's a system behind it, but I'm gonna <laughs> make sure I know that before I actually start coming to Tommy with this. Um, the actual handle is a rosewood handle. Now, the beauty about this handle is it is, I mean, I described before very enthusiastically how incredible this thing fits in the hand. It's, I mean, it just feels so powerful in the hand and so much balance and you have so much control over the tip. It's just, it's hard to describe. You really have to hold one in your hand yourself. Now, the handle is actually ergonomically uh, made so it fits your hand and your palm perfectly, hugs your hand right in between this monster pommel brain bashing um, <laughs> tip here. Uh, it's not pointy, it's smoothed it out, it won't cut you or anything like that. But you know what, with some impact, you can definitely do some damage here. And I think, you know, it's definitely a zombie brain basher and that's exactly what they call it and that's what it is, okay? Uh, you can basically, if you're doing some fine work, you can hold it, okay? You can hold it a little bit, you can choke it a little bit right up here. Um, it's just it's just a really beautiful piece and it's it, it feels so great in the hand. I have not cut with this yet. I am gonna be making another video uh, of specifically for the Kukri uh, with tatami mats because I don't wanna make this video too long. I'm gonna make it two parts. And, uh, but I did cut with the Bowie, which I'm gonna be showing you in a second, and then I'll show you some uh, cutting footage of that Bowie as well. I measured it pretty much exactly a six inch handle. So the measurements that they actually advertise on the website are pretty accurate in terms of uh, what they gave me. Maybe like an inch, half inch off, nothing too bad. It comes with a leather sheet. Okay, very beautifully made leather sheet though, I gotta say guys, I mean, it's like shoelace material. I know someone said this kind of looks like a shoe and I said, listen, if the shoe fits, you know. Um, it's, the way they make their sheets and you'll see it in, I think you might have seen it in the video a little bit. The sheets are made after the blade is made, okay. The sheet is not just an off production, you know, make 100, fit it in and ship it out. This sheet was actually sized and made after the knife was produced, okay? And I can tell that because it is an absolutely perfect, perfect fit, okay? Snaps into place, it kind of turns by itself from the spine, turns into place and locks into place. There's no seams, no transitions in between. It is just an absolutely perfect fit. And you can tell the amount of work and craftsmanship that was put into making the sheet to fit the knife. And I, for one, ex I really appreciate that. From one who buys, who in, 
spend so much time with Katana and the upset that I had, the disappointment that I have sometimes when the Skullbird or the Saya is not fit to the blade properly and you have like that uh, blade rattle, that just annoys the crap out of me. And to have something that's fit so well and can come in and out so seamlessly, I mean, listen to that. Coming out so seamlessly is really a pleasure and I can really appreciate the amount of work and attention to, to detail that was put into it. That's one of my favorite things is just the attention to detail, the solid, beautiful quality of this kukri. I can tell everything that they say about the craftsmanship and the artistry and how they make their blades is 100% true and I am a firm believer in what the Kukri House does offer and you know I'm, I'm looking at it firsthand. So now let's just get some close-ups and details uh, specs of my K-double-H-I Bowie or Bowie however you want to pronounce it. I'm not going to repeat this over and over again, guys. I say Bowie. I know it's properly pronounced Bowie, but I'm going to say Bowie because I like saying Bowie and it's my channel and that's how I'm going to do it. So hopefully nobody gets offended. So this Bowie from K double H I, okay, is another, if I could get a balance, is another extremely beautiful piece. Now I did cut with it today. I did actually run this through Mother's Meg and I took out pretty much any of the, most of the scratches. I mean, there is a couple little, little things, little, not, not, no chips or indentations, but little, little, little like tiny scratches around the edge because I was really going to town with this thing. So it's, uh, the blade is still in great shape, no damage, no rolling, nothing that I can really see on the edge uh, that, you know, any damage or what whatsoever that I would be alarmed with or, concerned with or needs to take out or anything like that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with the edge whatsoever, even after doing this extensive, really oh heavy God. duty cutting is what I did today. And it's still in pretty much it's, it's illustrious splendor. So couple specs on this guys. So this particular blade, I measured myself at around 11 inches. Well, they advertised it at 11 inches. It came in at around 10.8, 10.9, you know, close enough for the most part. The steel is also 5200 tool steel, very tough steel. The clip point itself, itself is actually uh, four inches, which is pretty damn impressive, you know, and it's actually, it's not really a false edge on the clip point. There is sharpness to this edge. Now it does have potential like the Kukri for you to go in and make it sh sharper if you like it, but it is a very, uh, I mean, for penetration wise, this thing does a charm. I mean, I did, I was stabbing, um, in terms of basically the drop test right through. and straight drops yeah. into into into, into the uh, into wood and also the uh, stab test into the cardboard, it uh, it did a really great job and the the, the sharpened air clip point actually assisted me in getting that getting that into into the penetration of whatever I was stabbing in the test. So it actually it is not a false edge. It is a sharp edge. Not as sharp as obviously uh, the the main edge of the knife, but it is definitely uh, feasible and can be improved if you wanted to. Now, what's most impressive about this, and I'll show you some B-roll picture, is the spine, guys. This is a very thick spine. The, I measured the spine at 6.93 millimeters, which is interprets to about 0.27 inches. It's a very, very thick spine. It goes pretty much up until the clip point, and then it thins out to a very fine, you know, sharp, right up until the point. Now the handle is actually, it's around a, um, it's around a six inch handle. Now it's a power hammer. Well, obviously I didn't mention it's a full, beautiful, beautiful tang all the way around, very noticeable. And there's this, this big piece of metal, which is called a power hammer that's actually welded into the tang or the handle of the knife that actually can work as an actual power hammer. And you'll see on the test where I was kind of banging, you know, banging into the wood and it did such a great job. I mean, I could definitely, if I had to, I could hammer some nails in with this thing. Um, but again, this is also, this handle is also, while not as comfortable as the Kukri where really it hugs your hand, it is a very comfortable carrying and holding Bowie. Okay, I never felt that I had no control, even with aggressive swings, never felt like it was gonna slip out of my hand or anything like that. There is a lot of control in this particular Bowie. And I just, not much more to say, guys. I'm very happy with it. It's definitely the epitome of Kukri quality. Now, I am gonna 
be investing my time into also some of Donnie B all days, D-Bear designs, which I'm really excited to get into. And basically what, what D-Bear has done with his knives, he took some of the most popular designs and he redid them to what every knife lover would want in their knife, okay? Extremely solid construction, huge thick spine all the way up to the tip and a beautifully comfortable handle, ergonomically, you know, in tune with your hand, whether you have large hands or medium sized hands. I mean, it just fits so well in the hand, you know, and a very chunky, beefy, full tang, very high quality steel, a very expertly done sharp edge. And it's just, these knives are just every knife lover's dream. With his redesigns, he just made whatever was good so much better, and I would say along the lines of being epic. And that's why the D-Bed designs are among the best-selling knives in a cookery house that they have in their inventory. And that is why they decided to put their best masters on the job to create, specifically create, all of the D-Bed knives. So you know for a fact, from this point on, guys, if you order a D-Bed knife, Okay, those badass knives are gonna be the best possible quality that the KHHI can offer you. So be comfortable in your purchases because you're gonna get, my opinion, and for what I've seen and the demonstration I've seen from Scab, Quiet Boys Cutlery, from Donnie B all day, these knives are absolutely incredible. They're epic. So you definitely need to take a look at that. But the Crookery House in general, guys, so shrouded with history so shrouded with tradition and expert knife making, traditional knife making methods that give you really pretty much one of the best possible products that you can find in handmade knives. So you have my personal recommendation for being comfortable doing business with the Kukuri House. Uh, they do have a lifetime warranty and a li limited, stay there, and a limited one year warranty. <laughs> I get scared when this thing falls because this thing falls on my fingers. It's definitely good. gonna take some fingers off. It's, it's, it's heavy, but heavy but not, but still very balanced, guys. Very balanced in the hand, as I've said a million times. Kind of lost the train of, train of thought here. They have a limited one year warranty and a lifetime warranty. There are specifics in there, but they do stand by their knives, guys. If it ever, you ever get a chance, ever a situation where you get a knife that's not fully up to the potential of what they're selling it at or what, how it's described or how have you seen it perform, they do stand behind their product and that's extremely important. I was extremely happy with their customer service. Their customer service was fantastic. They returned my emails. Obviously, there's a 12-hour time difference or a little bit, like a whole day, I think, something like that. Um, they do return your emails when they do get in. Very kind and courteous, very informative, and they do help you in every way they can. They particularly got my knives, like I had said in my, own, uh, my unboxing, within a month. It was a, in about a month, a month and like maybe five days or something like that, I had it in my hands, which is pretty damn impressive. Um, there have been situations where people have been waiting a lot longer. Understand, guys, we also went, with, went through a pandemic and there was a, every business around the world, okay, every corporation, every practice kind of suffered something. But <clears throat> I think they're kind of back on their feet now. They're running on full steam. And as you can see within the video of the tour, <clears throat> it's a very organized facility. DHL is their prime delivery company, and DHL is phenomenal, guys. DHL, as soon as DHL gets it, gets the package, and if even if they tell you it's gonna be two weeks from now, they usually deliver it within like two days or three days. It's pretty phenomenal. So far, guys, listen, plus plus all around. I'm just very impressed, very impressed with the customer service, very impressed with did their lineup of beautifully made knives, very impressed with how they go about their business and traditional methods of making their products. I am very impressed with the fact that they carry the entire incredible line of D-Band knives, which I am most definitely will get every single one of uh, Donnie's <coughs> designs on my wall, you know, little by little, of course. And they're very affordable, guys. All these things are very affordable. I mean, you know, $200, a little over $200. Most, they, most of their knives and most of the D-Band knives are under $200. I mean, it's, it's actually criminal because you're getting such, the, the quality that you're getting for that price point is, is unbelievable. I mean, it really is. I mean, I don't, I don't have an adjective for it right now. It's, it's pretty incredible. So be comfortable with, you, with doing business with them. I can wholeheartedly recommend them, wholeheartedly recommend 
uh, all of their pieces, whether it's a piece that's made strictly from the Kukuri house, or if you really want to get into real deal badass, so we can get into the D bed designs. I think you'll be extremely comfortable with all of any purchase you make from them and you'll be comfortable in the whole process of going through the order and getting it delivered to you. It's almost like I had no cutting session today and I wouldn't even believe it if you know, remembering exactly, you know, how much I was pounding the shit out of this thing. So it is definitely very well made. And uh, this knife will definitely be going to another reviewer. I'm going to revolve this around to get other people's opinions as far as the craftsmanship, the strength and cutting ability of this knife. Guys, that's all I pretty much have for you right now. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed a little history on the Gurkhas and the Kukri. Uh, I'm going to come back to you with another video with a cutting session with this kukri, okay, on tatami mats. And I'm really excited and, and I think I'm gonna be very impressed with exactly how this performs. And it might be actually one of my go-to weapons after my katana, of course, uh, to <laughs> cut some uh, tatami practice, have some katami practice cutting. So stay tuned, guys. I'm gonna get you that video as soon as I can get that working. Thank you for watching, guys. Thank you for sitting through my videos. As always, I really appreciate it. Thank you to my subscribers. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, guys, please be so kind to hit subscribe, hit the bell icon so you know what videos are coming, and like the video if you like what you saw. And a little information, guys, we're filming another Blade Talk with Joe and Scab uh, Monday, and we'll be airing it sometime next week. And then on this channel, I'm gonna be fil so filming sometime next week an exclusive interview with Walter Soros, famous icon, bladesmith, American bladesmith of Japanese style katana. So exciting, a lot of exciting things are coming, guys. Captain Electro is coming Monday. You will see him next week. Please subscribe and please stay tuned for some great content. Guys, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Peace out, everybody. Thanks.